press start and this is our intro. This will be our intro. You're listening to the <laughs> the Couch Caddies podcast of the year. Two guys, twenty eight clubs, zero putts given. With your hosts Ben Ridner and Gunnar Kane. Yep. Yep. Welcome, welcome to the Couch Caddies episode four. Uh, I'm Ben. I'm here with my best golfing buddy, Gunner. That's me. Uh, uh, that's him. Yeah. So I'm the. I think I'm the one in the shorts, or uh, what is that? A green fanny pack in the logo. <laughs> yes, you are is the that one. me with the blue chair. Do I have the blue chair or the red? Yeah, chair? you got the blue chair. You've got the Masters green bib. Oh yeah, because you uh, are got down the, with the visor. Yeah, I've got visors and I've got blue sneakers, so that's me. Also, I'm not ca- like I don't want to carry the bag, so I just put it down all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. I will <laughs> carry like, the bag. I'm like, I'm not carrying this bag. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that's me and the logo. That's you with the hat. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're the couch caddies. My me and my best golfing buddy Gunner. We've got producer Kate here tonight. Hey. Hell yeah! Hey. She, she says hey. Um, producer Kate, she's not wearing her headphones right now, so she's producing a whole lot of awesomeness. <laughs> so that's exciting. Um, yeah, I mean, like it's just it's more golf, right? We love golf, so more golf this week. Um, I don't know if, well, like, I again, like, I listened to last week's episode, yeah. And there were like more corrections in it than I can possibly even do this week. I'm not cor- I'm not walking anything back. I've said it. No, I mean like I. But the point is, is like we we discussed this afterwards just on the phone, and it was like Emiliano Grillo last won in 2015. He did not win in 2018 in Washington D.C. That didn't oh, well, happen. So well, you you also. You also said go back and look at at uh, Ricky Fowler's 2014 season. Like I was supposed to have those numbers just ready. Yeah, no, no way. No, that's, no, that's nine what I mean. I'm with you. Ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I ain't doing it. So no, we're not. What we? That's why the name of the episode was what it was because we know nothing. We continue to know nothing. We just like watching golf and talking about it. Um, if you're, if you want actual stats, there are people for that. Um, I'm the eye test guy who's trying now to do research. It's a lot more difficult than I've ever anticipated. And Gunner's the research guy who's trying to do the eye test. Yes. How's that working out for you? Um, not good. I think, (laughs) (laughs) um, but yeah. So if we're following the actual PGA tour, which is, I believe they're called the designated events now. We haven't come up with a better name for the non-designated events. I'm like four for four on picking winners. Uh, You're four for five, but it's an incredible run. Yes, including like I picked Victor Hovland first this week. Mm -hmm. Like he was my first pick out of the gate just on the eye test. I need to get better about the numbers and everything. Um, That is true. Yeah. That is true, but everybody top 30. Yes. We had three top 10s. Yeah. So we're in a winner. So, so I'm, slurping on my, I'm slurping on my green drink pick, for dinner. Pick so. with us is yeah. all I'm trying to say. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say like Victor Hovland had like a come from the back win, but he, you know, he certainly didn't, didn't have a whole lot of confidence in him on, you know, starting the week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Nobody really seemed to know where he was going. Um, Rory was up there. I, so I've been listening to a few other podcasts because it keeps my brain moving. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and we talked about this. We, I mean, we Scotty Scheffler. He yes. needs he needs like a putting coach. He needs a putting mastermind. He needs somebody to teach him how to putt again. I don't know. I don't know how you're this dominant and be this bad in one in one major area. Yeah, I don't know either. Like he's he's number I mean, one tee to green by a long oh, by so much. He's like almost plus twenty one tee to green. Yeah. 
Like, like he's he's or dead. Shots, he's dead last in putting. Shots gained. Yeah, through four through four categories minus putting. Yeah, he's plus almost twenty one. You know, I was listening to um to Kyle Porter, and basically, if Scotty Scheffler was playing, if if um, sorry, I've got something stuck in my throat. If um, if McCarthy, Denny McCarthy, was putting for Scotty Scheffler this week, mm-hmm. Scotty Scheffler would have like won like at minus twenty five. He would have won by like twelve shots. Oh well, that's because Denny McCarthy uh, grew up in the Mid Atlantic region of uh, Virginia. Yeah. And uh, is a baller, an app, and that's where you learn how to putt well. In the Mid Atlantic, in the Mid Atlantic, why? I don't know. Just uh, great putters. Okay, Denny McCarthy, uh, Gavin Kane, Gavin, <laughs> Gavin Kane. <laughs> I think that that's the list. Okay, I like that list. That's a good list. Uh, <laughs> I'm not mad at that list. I mean, Victor Hovland, obviously not from the Mid Atlantic, but still wins in the playoff hole. You know, I really felt for Denny McCarthy. Like these guys don't, you know, you feel like they don't really get an opportunity to win all that often, especially when you have like John Rahm, Scotty Scheffler, um, Rory McIlroy, like Patrick Cantley, like all these guys sort of like around and, 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 you know, hanging out on, on Sunday, um, you know, it's, it's must be emotional for him to sort of, you know, it looked like it was a little bit emotional after the round, um, yeah. you know, that he didn't get this win that he see, I don't know that he, you know, blew it, blew it, but you know, when you have a guy like Victor Hovland, who I think everybody expected him to do a lot more, you know, he came out of, um, Oklahoma state university. I think it was 2019 with Matthew Wolf. Yes. And I think everybody just like expected the world out of both of them. I kind of want to get into Matthew Wolf a little bit later, but I don't really want to jump into like the live golf stuff just yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, Victor Hovland, like now that he's got, you know, a win at Jack's place, Memorial Dublin, Ohio, Muirfield village. Um, he, like he's, he's, you know, contended for the last couple of majors. He's been like right up front. So hopefully he can pull it off. I mean, a U.S. Open for him would be huge. Same thing for, you know, British Open, obviously being from Europe. I mean, a British Open would be huge for him. Um, I don't know if he really has the gameplay for like a link style course. But um, yeah, I I don't think so. I don't think so, but I think that you know, you take a you take a Ricky Fowler whose game kind of evolved into a link style play. Yeah. You know, over over his over the years, right? Yeah. I mean it it took him like ten years to really to really batten down the hatches and go to those European tour events and play a ton over there. And then his game just ma- matches, just began to match link style, and it really helped him out in the U.S. Well, I'm wondering if that's like also one of these things, like when you play like these Western courses, like not the Midwest co- courses, but like these, and not the West Coast courses, but like the Western Western courses, like Oklahoma or Texas. Like, do you just sort of see this link style? Like, there's a ton of wind to play the ball low. The ground is undulating and hard and dried out, and like. Just get it to the green and 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 you know try to try to putt as you get your putts in as quick as you can. Yeah, yeah, I think that's absolutely true. Yeah, I think I think when you're playing on hard top sandy turf, um, then you go over you know you go over to maybe a European tour event where you've got to play everything under the wind. You you yeah. know you know how these shots are supposed to go. It's the same. It's the same kind of golf. You just don't have the same elements, but yeah. the same shots yeah. work. Yeah, I get that. Um, 
So, yeah, so Denny McCarthy comes up short. I feel kind of bad for him. Um, Victor Hovland wins on the first playoff hole. Scotty Scheffler, um, like, this is like one of those dumb things where it's like, it's like, should should Scotty Scheffler, should he be hitting the panic button? Like, is, is he panicking yet? What's happening to him? Maybe. I don't know, you know? Like, I don't play that that elite level of golf, and I I think it's weird for people to speculate. Like, maybe it's a may, crazy idea. Maybe it's golf. Maybe golf's just happening. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I was going to say, like, is this like the mental side of golf, or do you think this is physical? Like, he's it's got like a weird hinge in his shoulder somewhere, or you think he's just like like this is this is in his head and he's just got to go to Texas for a month and putt all over and put lights out like at home for a minute before he comes back out to do this again. I don't I don't know. I think I think what I'm saying is like um is is you if you play a course over and over and over again, right? You get better and better and better but you can still have off days, right? Yeah. And maybe that's mental, maybe maybe that's physical. But when you're bumping around all over the place, like sometimes golf just happens and, and you just don't play well for stretches. And it's not like he's not playing well. I mean, it, it, well, that's the thing, right? It's the like, number we, like, one player in the world, right? Yeah. So I noticed this at the Masters. So, like, does, I, you know, if he I'm, was playing so bad, he would have fallen out, out of number one. I mean, he's still playing phenomenal golf. It's just he's not winning. And that I don't that's what I don't think is fair to say. No, but it's been like, you know, it's been two months since like we've noticed like he's had like a little bit of like the yips in the putter. You know, like he's missing he's like not hitting things for like outside of ten feet. Like outside of nine feet, ten feet is like his putting just is you know what I mean? He's not sinking things from thirty feet to kind of save par or like you know, birdie and like get sort of a, you know, a half a stroke on the field. He's missing the ones that are like pretty up close. It's, you know, so it's sort of like, well, what? Well, maybe that, maybe the course, I don't, I don't know. Maybe the course doesn't fit his eye and players talk about this all the time. Yeah. And, and maybe it just doesn't, maybe the courses he's been playing the past two months just don't fit his game or maybe they don't fit his eye. I mean, it's, you know, maybe it's different kind of grass. I don't know. Um, You know, but, it would be something to look into, but I don't know. It seems to me like it's just golf. It's just golf. Golf's hard, right? And maybe yeah. he's just suffering uh, from golf and not. Yeah. It's, maybe it's not mental. Maybe it's not physical. Maybe it's just the game's damn no, hard. Like I also blame, you know, guys like us who sit here and, th- and think that everybody's, you know, three to six month run at the top should be Tiger-esque and last, you know, seven or eight years. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that's not how it works. Like these guys are, I don't know if you know this, these guys are good. They're so good. <laughs> They're so good. But, <laughs> it's, but you know what I mean? It's like where, you know, it's like they're trying to peak individually. And this is something I've been thinking about for the last couple of weeks. And I like, it, I didn't really put this into like, how many basketball games are there in a season? Uh, 84. 84- Four eighty six, something like that, right? How many baseball games are there? A hundred and sixty two, right? And like a hockey game, there's a lot less. Like it was like eighty five. I think hockey and basketball have the same amount. Uh, yeah. I'm probably wrong, but but like, so you, if you're a professional golfer, if you're a professional golfer grinding on tour, like Scotty uh-huh. Scheffler is, like John Rahm is, how many tournaments are you playing a year? Mm, twenty, maybe twenty five. Like let's, I think it's closer to twenty five, right? Like, uh-huh. I, just, I well, especially let's, especially with the PGA Tour that's starting next year. <laughs> yeah. Um. Sorry, I'm just gonna keep calling it that. Uh. Yeah. With the PGA Tour that's coming out next year, it's gonna be sixteen to eighteen designated events, majors. Um. Uh, you know, I think it's yeah. Let's just say twenty five. I think it, it it might be more like thirty for these guys. I think they're gonna want to get get out and play other events, but let's just say twenty five. Yeah. Like it's a six day week. Right. And it's also an individual sport. Well, it's not, I mean, it's, it's, that's what I'm saying. Like it is, you are traveling one day, either home cause you have the week off or like to the next golf course. Right. Then you've got a practice day, you've got a pro-am day, and then you've got four rounds of golf. Like if you're lucky. Right. Right. So you've got, Let's just say six. Let's just say you're Scotty Scheffler or you're Rory McIlroy, you know, like let's say you're Scotty Scheffler and you're, you've got this like historic run of not missing cuts. You're doing six days a week. 
you know, it's 150 days of golf, like at least of playing yeah. a four and a half hour playing golf for six hours. A day. A day. You're doing that 25 times six. Uh, yeah. Like, it's not like, oh, you get to the gym, you have like a, you know, a, a an hour, hour and a half shoot around, like go into the locker room, like get stretched out, yeah. like take a nap, like listen to your headphones. Then it's like four, like 12 minute quarters. Right. Or 15 minute quarters. It's like, okay, you, like you sit play for down where somebody else is doing their job. And yeah, I'm not saying like, oh, like there's, it's like more physically exerting, but it's just like, just to have that kind of grind six days a week, 25 weeks, like, you know, 25 weeks a year traveling all over the place for, you know, it's just, I didn't really, like, I didn't really think of it. Yeah. I didn't really think of it, but it's like it, to me, it's probably the most grueling schedule in sports. Yeah. Like on the body and on the mind. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It is tough. Golf's hard. Golf, golf is, those guys are good. They're good and it's hard and they live under par. They do. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do those things. Um, they do all their things. Colin Morikawa. Like tied for fifth? Yes. Right? Without playing Sunday. Yes. Back spasms and yeah, like just back spasms withdrew and still, like still T5. Still, yeah. Well, let me see. What is it? Uh, nope. I don't want that. I'm being smart of this. We got, I have my computer open in front of me. Nice. Oh, they put him all the way at the bottom with a withdrawal, which is annoying. Colin Morikawa, 212. Oh, that's like going to be tough math. Yes. Um, Where did I see it where it wasn't this? This is so annoying. I just go round by round. Yeah. That's not hard to do. I'm trying to figure out this. I'm I'm using a couple of new apps and things. But it doesn't really ever do what I want it to do, so we'll figure it out. Let me tell you what it is. Yep. So so round one. Round one, he was one under. Round two, he was minus four. One over. And then yeah. round three, he was four under. And then and he yeah. would have been T5. Yeah, he's T5. If he had just shot even par. Yeah. So, it's you know what I mean? He's If he had gone four under again, he would have won. Um, but he didn't even play the fourth round. That's it's just insane. Um, so, I don't know. I'm a sucker. Much as like, if your back spasms are one of those, it's like, how do you fix a back spasm? Well, see, it says round three or round four he did, did play, but that's not true. No, yeah, I've got withdrawal. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird. Whatever it's doing, it's doing round two for round four or something. Yep. Very odd. All right. So then, yeah, that's Jack's place. That's Memorial. Great job. They did it. Good for them. Yeah, Victor Hovland wins $3.6 million. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, Should have gone to live. I know. Um, I was going to say, Victor, uh, uh, HV3, Harold Varner, you know, won, won another like half a million on top of that last week. So good for him. Hey, um, let's get off the, the PGA drink. Tour for a minute. Let's get off the PGA Tour. Let's not go to live yet. Let's go to the LPGA Tour. Well, let me just say real quick, big ups to uh, Victor Hovland because he is currently he uh, well, he would have finished by now, but because uh, it is nine o'clock Eastern, nine p.m. Eastern. Um, 
but immediately after winning, he went and caddied a 36 hole uh, Monday qualifier for one of his um, Oklahoma State University teammates. Have we heard yet? Because I know today's the longest day in golf. Very today long. Is, today is like the it's it's the final qualifying days for people to make it into the U.S. the sorry the USGA Championship. Yes, um, there's also a 13 year old in 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 uh, one of the fields. Really? Yeah. And then um, Michael Block is obviously a story in this right now, so that's fun. So is his son. Um, but I think he get. Yeah, I think he was automatically he gets automatic exemption into it after his yes finish at the PGA. So that's good. Uh-huh. Um, I, and just inside an endorsement deal with Raising Cane's Chicken. What? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. What does that do? It gives them free money. It sounds like raising canes. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a southern chicken. There's some in Virginia, North Carolina. Okay, I've yet to. Even, it's a restaurant. Um, Everybody. Producer, oh, there's some in Tennessee. Kate? I'm sorry. Have you heard of raising like canes a, chicken? I have. Oh yeah, people love it. Okay. Kate's heard of it, so that's good. Never had it, but I have heard. People love it. Okay, Thomas, friend of the show, friend of the show, Thomas, huge fan of raisin canes. Okay, I guess I'll next time I go on an adventure, I'll have to see if I can find some. I've never been. Okay, um, let's get on to the LPGA tour. Rose Zhang, Rose Zhang, Zhang, Rose Zhang, Zhang. No, just Rose Zhang, Z H A N G. Yes. Um, LPGA pro debut has not graduated from Stanford yet, where she has collected a bunch of accolades and is now again in a Tiger Woods esque conversation. Um, she wins her LPGA pro debut at the Mizuho America's Open, which is just up the road for me at Liberty Golf, Liberty Golf Course. Mm-hmm. Liberty oh, National that. Golf Course, where you can see now, the Statue of Liberty. That's right. Now, did she take the money? And run? Well, she'd have to take the money and quit being a collegiate athlete. I think she did. I think she quit being a collegiate athlete. Well, welcome to the LPGA Tour. Yeah, I think that's why she's... She's... um, It's considered like her pro her debut on the LPGA. Um, love that. Yeah. So she didn't play as an amateur. No, I believe she didn't. I believe it was her debut on the LPGA tour. She's a 12 time winner at Stanford. Tiger Woods is an 11 time winner. Um, along with, um, Patrick. Oh, I I forget. Oh, he's, um, he's been on the tour for a few years. He hasn't really. Patrick Rogers. Yeah. Patrick Rogers. Yeah. 11 time winner in, you know, no to begin um, the third. Yep. Uh, two time USGA champion and the reigning Augusta national women's amateur champion. Um, everybody has these massive, you know, expectations of her. in my opinion. Yep. Yeah. Everybody's just sort of like, Oh, she's the next tiger woods, which, uh, let's, let's can let's hold back. Let's, I will hold back on that. If you want to go, if you want to go into that, you can. Um, yeah, the victory gives Zhang immediate LPGA status, which she accepted. Yep. She she made four hundred twelve thousand dollars. Do you um, think she was making more in the NIL deals? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah. Probably I wonder when they're going to bring like lady players to the the LIB Not to stage. knock this. Not to knock this, because it's a fantastic win. Just as a side note, yeah, I think the comparison of this is going to be a hot take, and I don't mean it in any disrespectful tone. Okay. So shut me up if it comes off disrespectful or just okay. say it does. Yeah. But the comparisons to Tiger Woods on the LPGA Tour, it is so diluted with phenomenal players that it's such an unfair comparison. And until somebody like Michelle Wee, which 
an you know side side note yeah nobody nobody on the lpga has really fully attempted the pga tour like michelle we did no and and i think i think that if we're going to compare uh lpga players to tiger woods i think it really has to come with that i am talented to this i i have the skill not talented i have the skill level so high that i'm willing to go back five six hundred more yards and really attack it and then be successful because I think that would be fair. I think it would. I think it would be fair personally. And tell me, if, tell me, I'm an idiot. I just think you have to, like. I think the thing is right. You sort of have to like then come up with a definition of fair. I don't know that that would be fair in terms of um, like just generally. Like I think we know generally the like the. Let me okay. Let me go back a little bit. And the reason that, uh, like I understand what you're saying. I don't think it's wrong to say. I totally understand what you're saying, um, but. What you're saying is, is that you want to see a female golfer basically show up and play along men's golfers and have some success, not as much success as Tiger, but right. just some success on the PGA Tour, not the LPGA Tour. That's what I'm saying. Which I get. What I want to say now is, is just that, like, I understand that if you take a female player and compare her to female players in terms of stats and everything and how that works out, um just because we have all this like golf data that it's easy enough to sort of say, okay, like this is like, these are tigers numbers over these like 15 years. Like, is anybody going to stand up to those numbers over the course of 15 years? Um, just in terms of uh, like analytics, what my biggest issue with the tiger comparisons are, is that tiger showed up looking and then this probably this is inaccurate in terms of what it is but like tiger showed up looking like a wide receiver and the rest of the field looked like linemen yeah like tiger woods showed up like ready to run the 100 meter dash playing a bunch of guys who like drank beer and threw the shot put yes like that's true and I just don't think that it, that happens anymore. I just like, I think when Tiger showed up and played golf, it, he made it a sport. Uh -huh. I don't want to say he changed the sport, but like he turned it from being this like luxury activity by like people like Phil Mickelson and like, you know what I mean? Like Phil Mickelson was just like perfectly content being like, uh, like a star studded, like rich frat boy with like a dad bought at like 19 winning on the PGA tour. So like now yep. look at him now he's all about like longevity and like now he's all about like longevity fitness and, and, and fitness and coffee and health and gummies and whatever it is that he's doing these days. Like, and I just don't think any, I mean, like you look at like the, the winningest, not the winningest, but like I keep seeing the stats for like the longest driver on the PGA tour for like the 10 years before Tiger Woods got there was John Daly. Oh yeah. And it's as much and as one time, but one John time Daly's Davis like a farce was. at this point, isn't he? And like, he was back then. Oh, he was, he was the clown of the PGA tour, but he still has two majors. Uh, and that's true. Like, you know what I mean? Like he was the clown of the PGA tour. And like these guys who thought they were taking it so seriously still couldn't beat him. And then Tiger showed up and Tiger was like, no, 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 this is, this is, if you want to stay here, this is the new game. And the craze, the craziest thing about it all is like, to me, it still took like five to 10 years for any, it took like five years for anybody to catch up to the concept that Tiger Woods was doing it. It took until like 2000 and like seven, like Tiger Woods showed oh, up yeah. like 99 and 2000 and it still oh, yeah. took like, Rory McIlroy, like Ricky Fowler and those guys showing up in 2007 being like, being like, yeah, when I was 10 and 11 and tie, like we realized it was a sport. Oh and yeah. We when got, the first we, wave of like stud showed up. Yeah. Like that didn't have, like, I mean, you still look at like Pat Perez and JB Holmes and all these like kind of guys who were just like, just before time. Like, <laughs> Bro, 
I'll never forget the first time I saw JV Holmes hit a golf ball live in real life. And I said, there's no way. And he's, he, he got, he got in trouble this week. Smoked it. He got in trouble this and week. We got to talk about that in a little plays bit. Golf. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the thing with like, I think it's unfair to anybody because I think the increments in the analytics in golf and how close the players are these days will never be what Tiger was lucky enough to have back in the in the early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think I think too and I think all oh, that's an extremely fair point and I think to contradict myself a little bit the co- the competitive level within the LPGA is so high. Yeah. It's so good. They're so good. Everybody is yeah. good. It is what I'm saying. Like everybody's good. Like you don't have like there, there's a hand. We talk about this all the time with the PGA, but you have you have five to ten people who dominate the leaderboard. Yeah, a, in the in the PGA tour, and and every week on the LPGA tour, you have people winning every week that you've never even heard of. Yeah. Yeah. Like a girl in college just won. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they're She's all. She's got to go back and do her so final exams. She's flying back good. to Stanford. Um, but no, and that's sort of my point, which is richer. like, you no, know, it's like, imagine if, imagine if Steph Curry like went back in time and played in like the seventies before there was a three point line. And like, they, they made a three point line just for, you know what I mean? Like, that's oh, kind yeah. of what it feels like, like like Wilt Chamberlain's teams, like playing against like Steph Curry. Oh yeah, like so infrequently does somebody show up and change the game, but it happens. And like Tiger Woods managed to do that for fifteen years. Like it's just it's just insane. Well, that's like the Kareem argument, right? Because he was playing before there was a three point line, and then they put a three point line in, and he's like, "Fine, I'll shoot from here." Then, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. That is it on our, on the winners of the PGA and the LPGA tour. Um, We're going to take a quick break. I got to like, I just got a couple of like quick hot takes and then we'll be done. All righty. Is that cool? Love it. And now to your hosts, Ben Ridner and Gunnar Kane. Hey, that's us. We're back. Um, we're back. So, yeah. So, like, I know that we're sort of. I don't know that pro live is is the right response for me. I know Gunner's definitely pro live. I like live. I'm not gonna lie. I am pro. Uh, live concepts. I'm not. I don't know that I'm pro. Every. I heard a great line. Maybe I am pro live. I heard a great line that says there's a big difference between being in business with somebody and being in business for somebody and i think i was yeah i was trying to like i was trying to phrase it's a really good way of like phrasing like it it is really different when you are like you're in technically like an employee of you mm-hmm. can sh- you can choose not to be an employee, and I get that. Um, but there, like, there's a lot of people out there who shouldn't be employees for a lot of different places. Yes, and, and it's just you know, I don't know. Like, I always remember like those people who like went around and like bought people's rights for their land so they can frack them. Yes, right. But they don't work for the fracking company. Well, no, they, I mean they, they they know they like work for the frack, but they like made a bunch of money, like you like you know what I mean, like selling, like buying like the land and everything. And no, it's like, but I'm if, saying the the people that they bought, like if you had a house and they want to tear it down so they could so they could you know drill for whatever, yeah, then you made the money by the evil company, quote unquote, yeah, but you don't work for the company drilling. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, no, no. Like you, like you took the money, like you took the value of your house and value of your land and then you left. Correct. Right. And 
like that fracking did a lot of bad. Uh, this this is probably getting worse and worse. Let's probably not. This probably going. We're probably going down the wrong rabbit hole here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. No, but yeah, it's like. You know, it's like you sell your property, you know, and then fra- and then fracking it ruins them. People like are getting like fire coming out of their faucet and taps. And it's like, well, if you didn't sell your house, then like they wouldn't have fracked it and that wouldn't have happened. But it's just sort of like it's it's hard to say no to a lot of money, even though you may right. already have a lot of money. That may have just been I, po- I apologize if that offended anybody. No. That was just dumb. Here, I'll be offensive ish. Okay. Phil Mickelson doesn't run around doing uh, doing political ads for the leaders of the Saudi government. No, he plays golf. No, but this and is actually this is one of the things that I want to get into by the Saudi government. And that this is, is what... something I want to get into. This is a story in Golf Week, right? This is. Have you heard of? Endeavor, no. William William Morris Endeavor, right? Mm-hmm. They're a talent. They start off as a talent agency. Um, have you right. ever seen the TV show Entourage? I have not actually. Oh, okay. Well, like so, the one of the main characters, Ari Gold, is basically based on this guy, and he's the CEO. Oh, I know the actor, <sighs> Jeremy yeah, Piven. Jeremy Piven, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then basically, they become a production studio. They basically make so much money that then they like. So they're like the they own UFC. Yeah. Right. And they like Andy owns talent and Endeavor also owns IMG, which I believe is like where Arnold Palmer got his start. Right. Uh huh. He was on Freakonomics Radio and uh, he was discussing that Phil Mickelson and Bryson DeChambeau, who I assume are both like represented by him. Um, yeah. They wanted to fund what was, I guess, then the PGL or the L- or yes. LIV. Um, a one billion dollar um, investment opportunity, which is now financed by Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. I'm going to do a bit of this is on Golf Week. If you want to read it, if not, um, the plans for the investment fell through basically because Jay Monahan called him up and said, "Don't do it." Ari Emanuel <laughs> says, we have a lot of business with Jay and I didn't want to hurt Jay. I said to Jay, we're pulling out, but you have to figure out an economic solution here because it's going to force you to. And he did to his credit. I think Jay did an incredible job. Um, yes. 100%. Yes. The PGA Tour is so much better because Liv happened. Yeah. So then this is like, this is, and I sort of want to say this, big businesses who deal with other big businesses, they don't, they don't care about people. No, they can't. Yeah. So it's one of these things where I sort of like, I just, as much as the PGA, like how much does the PGA really care about people versus just caring about its own product and the future of its product? Um. So now like that live is being criticized for being backed by Saudi Arabia and sports washing mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. Um, uh, Ma- Ari Emanuel says he doesn't have a moral stance on LIV being funded by the PIF. He's not concerned about sports washing. I haven't really thought about it. I have enough on my plate. They're doing what they're doing. Um, Emmanuel said he once met with Saudi Arabia's crown prince and called him charming. He's incredible, Emmanuel gushed. He had this whole vision, bringing entertainment and movies back, and he wanted to spend $30 billion in entertainment. Well, I can do math. $30 billion, I mean, it's money, and I thought his vision was incredible. So basically, the... The PIF, right? The what? The public investment, the investment fund, yeah, of Saudi Arabia goes to Hollywood and says, "We want to spend thirty million dollars, thirty billion dollars on movies and entertainment. Can you do this for us?" And Ari Emanuel, who's sitting there going, "Well, like, I'm going to make a massive, like, what's twenty percent of thirty? I'm going to make six billion dollars, <laughs> right, on this, if not more." Like if not more, like as an agent and a and a and I'll become like a CF CEO, CFO, I'll become like a, a member of the board or whatever it is. Um yeah. he goes, and then to follow this up, he goes, but let's be very clear about something. I'm not defending what they did. You know, I've had a brother that's been in two White Houses. Every country does bad things, they just don't do it in an embassy. Talking about uh the journalist, yep. the Washington Post journalist. So mm-hmm. this is 
like one of those like really weird stories that I'm not sure if it's going to get like swept under the rug or not. But like there were American companies who were given the opportunity to make live happen. Yep. And Jay Monahan threw his weight around to make sure that it did. Well, I think the I think the sad thing here, right, is is not only did, did American companies have the opportunity and they didn't take it, but if if what Saudi Arabia is saying is we're just pouring money into the arts, we have that problem here in the U.S. We have art. We have elementary school, middle and high school students losing access to art and music and PE and stuff like this. Right. And and where where do you find the money to make these things happen? Well, you need the government to step in. And yeah. where are they going to where is the government going to get the money? Well, it could be the trillions of dollars that they sit on and claim it as debt. Yeah. Or they could take stuff from bad things like Colorado is a good example. Do you know what the leading uh, I'll use Colorado and Virginia because those are both my states that, that you know, I, I lived a great deal of my life in. In Colorado, do you know what the number one funding source for public schools is? What? Marijuana tax. Oh, really? The taxes on marijuana. And in the in Virginia, do you know what the leading uh, funder for public schools is? I want to say it's the lottery. It is the lottery. Yeah. And so they're going to have to find that money from cigarette taxes and alcohol taxes, all these bad things, you know, socially, somewhat no, no, socially yeah, bad I things. Think, I think it's really crazy, right? Because when they floated the idea of having the lottery in New Jersey, I think it's the, it's it's probably the same thing here. The number one funding of, of public education in New Jersey is the lottery mm -hmm. as well. Um, when they floated the idea, it wasn't supposed to be like single handedly funded. It was supposed to be like also now that we have the lottery with public school systems are going to get more money. It was supposed to be like in conjunction with like additionally to oh, the yeah. taxes that are already there. And then what yeah. happened is they were like, Oh, well, the lottery's making so much money. We can actually take money away from public schools now, from like the public funding of of, of education. And they yep. were like, Well, now we can't get rid of the lottery because people like gambling. Good for yep. them. Um, we do it sometimes. Uh, but, but the other side of that is like, is like if we got rid of the New Jersey state lottery, which a lot of people spend a lot of money on, they probably shouldn't. Um, they'd, they'd have a really, really hard time funding the public school system. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. No, but I'm saying like, yes, the money from the Saudi government comes from bad things. I get that probably comes from bad things i, I, I think don't the point know. is right the point is really is like not only like not does the not that the money comes from bad things it's that the money that's also being spent on golf like portions of that money is being spent on terror or is being spent on you know it like comes from these people who have like had their hands in you know worldwide disaster not worldwide but you know targeted disasters over the last however many decades oh a hundred percent but it's also you, I, all I'm saying is the U.S. has to be doing the same thing. I'm not. It, there can't be. It, it has to somewhat of not not terrorism, but you know, es, espionage isn't a word we use when we do it. But you know, uh, surveillance, right? And and buying weapons. I'm sure money from oh, no, and like we certainly like right. I mean, cigarettes like we, and alcohol come from those things too. You we know certainly I mean? like, we like we don't always use use our power for what's best for the world. We certainly use our power for like what is best for America, which may not always be what's best for the world. Right? Like right. It's this is like I this is I feel like this is the third time we've had a conversation like this. And all I like wanted to say really is that like Like there were, I imagine there were a lot of opportunities for other companies to step up other than the Saudi Arabia PIF to come and like help this organization come to light, um, live, come to light. And I think, I imagine the PIF may have been a last resort. Oh, probably. I mean, but now, but now you're kind of CEO stuck with of, who you came with. The CEO of Walmart bought a football team for $6 billion. 
Yeah. I'm sure he's, he could have stepped up and, you know, done something else, you yeah, know, exactly. You know, and like I said, like the PGA tour has, you know, they, Jay Monahan, they've got their hands in everything. So I'm sure it was easy enough for them to call up Ari Emanuel and say, Hey buddy, you want to go play Augusta next week? We can talk about your actual investment in this. Yep. So, um, a little bit of live news, which I, you know, not having to do with any of it, but just a live news in general. Um, Matthew Wolf leaves uh, Chase, uh, Chase and Brooks Kepka's Chase, Chase and Brooks Kepka's team. Yeah. I don't know if he's like planning on leaving live and retiring entirely. I like he's had issues with mental health, which is why I think he left the PGA tour. But well, and you can only imagine that the Kepka brothers are a little toxic. Yeah, I just imagine they're kind of weird, you know. Ugh. Yeah. But yeah, I, I have no idea. Like, so he's he's now no longer on. Um, let me just find this real quick. Well, they redraft every season, right? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe this. Is, was definitely his way of saying I need a break and put me on another team. Don't put yeah. me with these guys. I'm just trying to see what team Brooks Kepka is on. And maybe it has nothing to do with the Kepkas. Yeah. So maybe this is just his way of saying, look, I need some time. I'm struggling. Yeah, and, and he, I hope that's the truth. I know struggling. that he says that he said, I think he said publicly he was having a hard time dealing with um like being in that team environment. Um, yeah. Well, oh, sorry, was, Smash. Smash G C, of course. How did I how did I not remember that? I hope he gets I hope he gets the help he needs because because if you continuously just play literally play a game. For a living, and you keep having, um, you keep having a hard time. Then I just hope that you know it's it's obviously something that is not getting resolved if it keeps happening. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, uh. Basketball is a good example with Jaw Morant from uh, I think the Nets. Oh yeah, he um, keeps like showing up with guns places, doesn't he? Yeah, he needs some help, yeah. and obviously he's not getting it, you yeah. know. And and sometimes, you know, and and I know there's so many people out there who are gonna say you play like I said, you play a game for a living. But they say get over yourself. You play it. You play a, a kid's game for millions of dollars. You shouldn't be this way. But they, the brain doesn't care how much money you make, right? No. And the thing is, like, I mean, every day you're going out there and challenging yourself and pushing yourself to be the best that you can be. You know, a lot of people don't, right. inc including myself, you know, they don't have to go out there and do that every day for six hours a day. Right. Like, uh, all right. Last thing. Absolutely. Last thing. And then it's bedtime for me. Um, last thing. You uh, you put in your um, you, you send your email in for your master's tickets. I sure did. And I cannot wait till I get my <laughs> I'm sorry. You weren't picked this year. Try again next year. Well, yeah. But at least it'll have a master's like logo and a header on that email. So I'll feel good about it. I feel oh, like, yeah. I feel when like I know them personally. Com, you know, I'm listening. Yeah, exactly. So, hey, everybody at the master's, if you want to get us in with fake press passes so we can ask people dumb questions, um, we'd really appreciate that. I mean, I'll just I'll just go ask people dumb questions without a press pass. I just need a, I just need to get in. Yeah, I just want maybe we'll just be like, "How's your pimento cheese?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Is is yours as good as mine? Yeah. All right. You like this? I've cups? got mine in. Kate's got hers in. I think Kate has to, you know, if she does get them, she's got to pick who she's bringing to the Masters. Unless it's a practice round, and then you get four. Yeah. But either way, you know, she didn't she didn't bring me to Taylor Swift. Well, I'll never live that down ever. You will never live that down. I heard people I heard ladies were wearing adult diapers so that they didn't miss a single second. I believe it. Uh, I was not one of them for the record, but I believe it. The lines were very every, minimal during the entire concert. So every everybody can sleep sound knowing that Kate did not wear an adult diaper. I'm sure, that's what everybody was dying to know. 
All right. That's why they tune in, Kate. Super mm-hmm. producer Kate holds it like everybody else does. No, I just missed 30 seconds of a song. Run. <laughs> <laughs> she can tell you exactly which song it was, too. The bad ones. Correct. <laughs> oh. There are no bad ones. Oh, uh, right. I figured that was coming. Well, well, good luck to everybody getting your master's tickets. Um, thank you for listening. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, oh, Twitter. Real quick, now that you just said that, good luck to everybody with your master's tickets lotteries. But if you do win them, then screw you. Yeah, we hate your guts. No, yeah, we don't <laughs> like you. No, you know what's worth? I, if people win them in a lot, I'm okay with that. I'm, you know what it is? It's like the people who are like legacies and don't even care, but they're like, my grandpa like planted that tree over there, so I've got tickets oh, for life. I wonder who is that guy is. Bullshit. I have met people who are like, oh, yeah, I've won the lottery every year for 15 years. And yeah. I'm like, I've tried for 15 years and have not gotten it. Yeah. So no, I was, I was down in it. South Carolina and I was having a drink at a bar and there was a guy wearing a master's hat. And I was like, Oh, did you go to the master? He's like, he's like, yeah, daddy's gotten tickets for the last like 14 years. And I was like, you are in your forties and you call your dad, daddy. Yeah. Because he gives master's tickets. Craziness. They bought those drinks. Yep. All right. Instagram. Facebook, YouTube, don't forget to review, subscribe, anywhere you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple. The thumbs ups, the likes, give it to us. Stuff. Tell us how much you hate us or love us. That's what we're here for. Yeah, we just need you to say something. Yeah, we've, we had like 10 listens on our last podcast. Three of them were me. One of them was me. One of them was Welcome. Kate. You listen to the whole thing or just part of it? Uh-oh. Just the part that I talked to. Oh, okay. All right. So now she's, we got to get her to talk in more of it so we can get an extra listener. I don't listen. So none of them were me. And I'll tell you why I don't listen. You will tell you why I don't listen. No, because I can't wait. I just, I want to be surprised, which I'm not, but I want to be surprised (laughs) when you say you were wrong about this, Gunner. Yeah. I'm like, me? I'm going to listen back to this and be like, how dumb did I sound this week? All right. (laughs) Couch caddies out. Out. Night Gunner. Peace. Night Kate.